Hey guys, Pringle Gaming here. Welcome back to a prediction slash preview video. This one is for Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Millwall, and this one is possibly going to be a very interesting game for Millwall. I kind of think it's going to be one of the hardest games of the season. Wolves clearly are one of the best up there with Cardiff, who are currently one of the only sides, if the only side, that's currently unbeaten. And as for how the sides go into this match in terms of historical performances, well, Wolves have the much better record in the 41 games. As what they've done is they've won 20 games with their last win being a 4-2 win last time the two met at the Monoyou. And since then, Wolves is all of their goal scorers from that time have left. With those being Nua Dico, who scored twice and has now departed to Hull. Ethan Ebanks, Landel and Bakary Sacco. The last time Millwall beat Wolves was back in 2012, when Andy Keogh scored against his former club. Now, before I get into form of either side, I have to say my score prediction. I think that I'm going to go for a home side win. I hate betting against Millwall, and I hate saying that Millwall aren't going to get the result, but I think it's going to be a 3-1 win to Wolves. They are a fantastic side, no doubt. They're possibly the best team in the league, and I just think they're going to have too much quality. I don't know many Millwall fans that will go ahead and say, yes, we're going to win. I believe we're capable of winning, but believing you're capable and actually expecting them to win are two different things. I just can't think of Millwall doing well in this one. Now, in terms of the last three matches, Wolverhampton Wanderers haven't actually won one in the league in the last three matches, as they have won a game, but that was against Southampton in the EFL Cup. The results in the league were a 0-0 draw with Brentford, and they lost 2-1 to Cardiff, who, as I said before, are possibly one of the best sides in the league and are currently top of the league last time I remembered. As for Millwall, we come into this game off the back of some fantastic result. We won 4-0 against Norwich. We did lose 3-1 against Reading in the EFL Cup and draw 0-0 with Bristol City. But that 4-0 is a very good boundary for us to set ourselves. Now, for the team news... Wolves will be missing two important players. One that's been out for quite a while and the other that's a defender that's recently got injured. So the player they'll be without is Helder Costa. He has an ankle injury and so that could mean that he's obviously not going to feature. Someone that could do for Wolves is their new sign-in, Ndaye, who joined on loan from Villarreal. Now, Willy Bolly, their defender, is also out. And Nuno will be really frustrated with that because he's been the main man in their free at the back formation that has seen them do so well this season. And well, obviously, Carla Kume is out, but he wasn't going to feature in this game. He is recovering very well. So hopefully, he'll get back to playing football soon. And especially for Wolves, he was a brilliant goalkeeper. He still is, to be honest. As for Mill, there isn't actually any players out injured as Tom Elliott has overcome his injury and will have a strong chance of featuring if only making the bench. It doesn't matter. He'll still be there. Now, as for the team I'd go for if I was Harris, Archer has to be the goalkeeper. I think he's the best one, and I hope that the Scotland call-up will no doubt give him some sort of confidence to be able to go out there and perform like he did against Norwich. He was fantastic in that game. The left-back has to be Meredith. He is class, and I think that... On the opposite side has to be Conor McLaughlin, the Northern Ireland star. He was fantastic for them and he has been brilliant so far this season. I just I feel sorry for Romeo, but he can't get in the team and there's good reason for that. The two centre-backs would actually be Hutchinson after he scored last time out. And I would actually partner him up with Webster rather than Cooper. I think Webster was pretty good in the last game and he deserves the chance to battle for that position. Now, in the left midfield spot, I would put Aidan O'Brien in there. I feel that we need to rotate players, and O'Brien would be the perfect player to feature in the team. And the right side, I'd have to give it to Jed Wallace. I don't think anyone else would put anyone else there. Wallace has been by far one of our better attacking players moving forward. He's been very wasteful with his opportunities, but he is a quality player. In the centre of midfield, it has to be Williams and Savile. The two of them have been absolutely fantastic. I never thought that those two would be the two that would be keeping Thompson out of the team because Thompson's a great player and I think 
it's going to be really unfortunate if he doesn't get in the team. But Saville, quite clearly, has been one of the best players in the league. He's been voted everything for Millwall, so quite clearly he is a star. Now, as for the strikers, it's going to have to be Morrison and Gregory. No doubt, Elliot probably won't feature. I think it's very unlikely that they get in the team. Morrison's the captain. And Gregory's finally found the back of the net. So I think Gregory's definitely staying in the team. Now, for three players I have to give for who could really affect this game for Wolves. First one has to be John Rudy, the goalkeeper. He is currently their number one, while Carla Kime is currently out. So the spotlight's on him to perform and get Wolves to where they want to be in the league so far this season, which is obviously trying to get promoted up to the Premier League. They've spent an awful lot of money doing so. It will be a shame if they don't get there. Second has to be Ruben Neves. I have so much positivity about this midfielder. He is quality. He's possibly the best player to put on a Wolverhampton Wanderers shirt. He's obviously their record signing. He's so talented. If we don't keep him quiet, they are going to run rings around us. He is class and, well, it's quite clear why so many big teams wanted him and I don't understand how many missed out on him. Obviously, they didn't want to take the chance on Wolves. Perfect opportunity to do so. Third is Diogo Jolta. He's on loan from Atletico Madrid. This winger is quick and overall he's a very well-rounded attacking player. He's got a goal and assist so far this season in a league he's never actually played in. So he's doing really well. I think that he is going to be important for them moving forward. Now, as for where each side sit in the league, Wolves currently 4th, while Mill sits 17th. And to end off this preview and prediction, I am just going to talk about the top goal scorers for each side. Leo Bontani is Wolves' current top goal scorer with two goals. He's joined with the newly departed Nua Dico. They both obviously sit on two so far this season. Now, while Mill do actually have a goal scorer that's got higher with three, Tom Elliott, there are two players that used to play for Wolves, Jed Wallace and George Saville, who both have two and will be edging for a goal against their former club. Do you agree with everything I've said or do you even have a different opinion or different key players for Wolves? Even if you are a Wolves fan looking at this video, let me know. Let me even know about how you feel your side's been doing the Mill fans. Let me know how you think we're going to do in this game. But obviously, like, comment, subscribe. And of course, I'll be seeing you guys in the next video that's on my channel. But until then... Goodbye.